Hello there viewers, I'm the Knight of Arcane, and we made it to 500 subs! Thank you all so much for checking out my content, and deciding to stay as part of our little arcane town. And sorry this video is pretty late. It's honestly amazing how fast we were able to grow just to 500, and honestly thought that it would take a little longer. But with 500 subs, it means our first sub goal has been reached. So that means I'll be drawing FNAF animatronics as JoJo stands. This took a bit more work than usual, but was a fun challenge and idea to draw and design. And I've been thinking about the story ideas for this since first announcing my sub goal. But before we get into the video, I'd like to quickly shout out my Patreon, which allows patrons to get monthly art rewards and access to Patreon-only polls, starting at $3 a month. And the more patrons we get, the closer we get to our Patreon video goals as well. So head over to Patreon if you can to become a patron today. And with that, let's enjoy our 500 sub special, and check out the FNAF stand, shall we? Mr. Takemi, Miss Dash, please have a seat. Thank you for this meeting, Mr. You may call me Agent Kirch. Agent? Fancy. Right. I'm glad the Foundation was able to schedule this meeting for our report. Indeed. Now, what seems to be the problem? Your call made this sound very important. That's correct, Agent Kirch. We felt it would be better to explain the situation in person to make sure no one intercepted our report. I see. Can the two of you explain to me what happened? Uh, right away. Like I said in the call, this happened four days ago. Jacob was at his job, and I was bored, and decided to hang out at his work. Though it was a bit boring. It was a slow day the time. Yeah, but then we heard a crash out back. I went to check it out, assuming some raccoons got into the dumpster again. And I naturally followed, because even if it was, it beat doing nothing. As I was about to open the back door, we heard a scream from outside, which was quickly muffled by something else. We got serious when we heard it. I was ready to knock some heads in. Anyways, we slowly opened the door and peeked outside to see a bunch of guys surrounding this girl. God, she barely seemed to be over 10. I was about ready to beat their heads in, especially the one that grappled her, but... Oh, you want me to continue, right? But I stopped her, figuring we needed a plan of attack. I had a plan. Attack. Anyways, they all were wearing suits. But their leader, for some reason, had a rabbit mask on. And was berating the girl, apparently named Susie, about the stunt she and her friends pulled. And how all of them were going to need to be disciplined. As the leader turned around, and I was about to go out swinging, a figure showed up behind the guy that was holding the girl. It was a stand. One that was pretty tall, had long yellow hair-like things, wire-like hands, and kind of robotic looking. It looked like a chicken. Dodger. It didn't look like a chicken. Well, its face looked like it was in the beak of a chicken, the legs were very chicken-like in design, and what did we find out later was the name of the stand? Chicken Farm. I rest my case. Anyways, the stand wrapped its wiry hands around the guy's arm, and his sleeves, gloves, and even his watch started to, well, melt. It started to look a lot like frosting and then started to melt in the heat. This distracted the guy holding her, 
causing her to break free from his grip and escape. She ran right past the door, and I was able to time it perfectly and swung the door right into two of these creeps. She was surprised when we came out, but we stood between her and these thugs, summoning our stands as we prepared to fight. But we weren't the only ones prepared either, right? Really, explain. Of course. As we got ready to fight, a boy popped out of the dumpster, and he didn't seem happy. Though he did seem to be hiding some concern for the girl, Susie, should we be just calling them by their names now? Would probably be easier. I guess so. The kid's name is Jeremy, and the rabbit mask guy was quite pleased to find him also. Cause he's a creep! Dodger. I'm not sorry. Anyways, the masked guy offered us a choice to mind our own business, or to get hurt. We took the third option. Third option. She means we refused, but in her come and try me way. Ah uh, yes, I see. Yeah, as one guy was about to try and deck me, a purple and afro rabbit looking guy took the punch to the face. This was Jeremy's stand, Rabbit Heart, which appeared right in front of Dodger and took the punch. Unlike Chicken Farm, this stand didn't have anything besides rabbit-like ears on its head that made it look like any form of Rabbit Man. Eh, I guess we don't look at the same things online. What? Nothing! When the guy punched Rabbit Heart in its cool, kind of creepy face, he disappeared. He was teleported into the dumpster Jeremy was in moments ago. Yeah, another guy tried to attack Jacob, and Rabbit Heart blocked it again. This time, teleporting the guy above us and falling onto another guy. The stand is able to mark free locations and Mainly when someone hits the stand in the face, they're teleported randomly to one of these locations. Unless Jeremy concentrates on a specific place he's marked. Interesting. Yeah, overall, these guys were a piece of cake. After we knocked them out and started to tie them up, I noticed Susie and Jeremy were trying to leave. I quickly cut them off with She's a Rainbow, though I might have freaked them out a little. A little. Fine. A bit. Taking a calmer approach, I got close and asked if they were okay. Susie looked ready to cry while Jeremy looked to the side. Getting a better look at the two, their clothes were dirty and they looked exhausted and a bit hungry. I offered them to come inside and get something to eat. Jeremy refused until Susie's stomach rocked. At that point, he relented and the two came inside, Dodger taking care of the trash. Quite literally, I threw the rest into the dumpster to be picked up by the cops later. But once we got them inside, that's when we learned something we had to tell the Foundation right away. Yeah, it was... quite honestly... disturbing to hear. Please, relay what you learned from these kids. Okay. <sighs> After getting them some food and washing their faces a bit, I did explain to them how we planned to call the cops 
to arrest these thugs and to work to get the two back to their parents. Both seemed scared by that plan. Susie seemed to even have tears in her eyes. They were scared. Yeah. They pleaded that we just let them go instead. To let the cops take the creep, sure, but to let the two of them run. I don't see why they'd want that. By the description you gave, they look like they've been on the run for a while, no? Unfortunately, that's not the half of it. Explain. They've been on the run for about a month now. However, he had them locked up on close to three years now. He? Yes, he. Or as they called him, the purple guy. Who exactly is this purple guy? We don't know. Heck, they didn't even know. They've never seen his face. Every time they saw him, he was in a full purple suit and either wearing a purple helmet or golden yellow rabbit head from a fursuit. I'm not including that detail for the report. That's how they described it. Back on track, this purple guy is apparently doing experiments involving stands and stand users. That's intriguing, but concerning. And he was doing these experiments on children. Yeah, totally effed up. Apparently, he's been abducting kids and experimenting with a golden arrow on them to figure out the secrets behind stands. Unfortunately, a lot of the kids apparently died during these experiments. They saw quite a few be taken and never returned. That's very hard to hear. It honestly hurts even more hearing it from Susie's own mouth. Just imagine my own sister having to go through that. Were they able to tell you anything else on this operation? Yeah, some of the kids he abducted, they already had stands. Trying to use them as the base of how a stand works and what a stand is. And seeing if he can forcibly change a stand into something else. They only know one user that survived their stand being forcibly changed in his sick experiments. The rest died. He ex experimented on them, tested them, forced them not only to become a stand user, but also fight each other so he could learn their abilities for years. I take it there's missing children reports on them. Worse, he apparently faked the deaths of every child he kidnapped, so no one could be looking for them. The lucky ones, that is. Ah, right. For some, their families were killed right in front of them before their kidnapping, while others were killed when the purple guy found they were getting too close. A month ago, a bunch of the kids staged a breakout and escaped. Most went their separate ways into small groups, like the group of five we found. May I get the full names of them for the report? Of course. Susie Shelley was the first. Then Jeremy Baxter. It wasn't long later when we found Fritz Florent, Gabriel Bernstein. I'm pretty sure it was Bernstein. Or was it Bernstein? It was Bernstein. I saw it on the report. I saw the same report. And think you're pronouncing it wrong. Anyways, Gabriel Bernstein and Cassidy Prince. Okay, and what did you mean by the fact it wasn't long until you found the others? Right, 
Well, it all started with these random noises and deep belly laughter that started to make the two of us feel a bit of dread. We didn't think much of it at first, thinking this feeling of dread was due to the story and the noise is just a building. The laugh doesn't really get a pass though. We didn't really notice it until right before the attack though. The attack. Right, we were looking around trying to find the noise. When I then saw by the counter a tall figure with a top hat. Not really intimidating, but for some reason I felt dread and then heard the laugh again coming from it. Susie then noticed and started to yell out, trying to tell Gabriel to stop using Fredbear when I got sucker punched. Looking to the side, I then saw a stand that looked like a blood red humanized fox with a hook hand. Happy. Very. That was Fox on the Run. And the thing was, the stand wasn't even close to me. In fact, it had its fist embedded into a box. With no way it could have hit me, then punched the box for whatever reason. I then summoned Cheese a Rainbow and went to rush it. When it then proceeded to punch the counter, right as my stand attacked. And I then felt a punch right in my gut. It seems Fredbear is able to project sounds that cause any who hear it to feel a sense of dread and fear, to either distract or cause their foes to flee. And Fox on the Run is able to always hit their intended target, even if they miss or are too far away from their target, as long as their attack makes contact with a solid object. Intriguing. Yeah, bit annoying though. Just fight me head on! I was about to help when Fredbear attacked me, and that stand is no slouch when it comes to its physical power. It was around then that Susie screamed out to her hidden friends to stop and that we're cool. Not in that exact description, but the stand soon stopped attacking us and two young boys came out of hiding. They apparently saw us bring Susie and Jeremy inside and thought we were kidnapping them or something. Yeah, just big misunderstanding. No serious harm, no foul. They had split up to gather supplies since, you know, they're all on the run. And these two were late to the meetup, along with their last friend, and went to look for them. With the reason being that Susie noticed the thugs we took care of and she and Jeremy came up with a plan to knock them out for a while. However, we then had another problem as the back door busted open and a bunch of these same thugs then piled into the store. They all now wore these weird rabbit masks and were led by the masked guy from the other group and this jacked guy with these weird metal gauntlets. Their leader seemed quite happy having most of his targets now all in one place and threatened the kids to come peaceably or else. Yeah, none of us were going to allow that. Me and Fritz, the kid with Fox on the Run as his stand, had our stands rush the guys? You know, thinking we could get the jump on them since they don't seem to have any stands. However, the big guy proceeded to grab She's a Rainbow since she made it to him first and threw her into Fox on the Run. Apparently, these weird masks, or at least the glass that makes up the eyes, 
allows non-stand users to see stands normally, like me and Dodger would. And the gauntlets the big guy had, and these batons the other fugs were starting to pull out, were some sort of metal that can make contact with a stand. So yeah, I'm starting to look a little bit worse. Not looking super great. But that's when the doors to the front and back of the store closed and we heard a voice asking Susie to hit the lights. Without missing a beat, Susie summoned Chicken Farm and the lights started to flicker before they went out. Well, most of them. The thugs started to look around, waving their arms around like they were in darkness, even though there was a light shining in the room. Behind us, we noticed another girl, their last friend, Cassidy, and standing next to them was this female figure, with a broken crown on their faceless head, a glowing sword in one hand, and a lantern in the other. The main source of the light in the room, along with light coming from their feet. It emitted light, yet your adversaries couldn't see it. Yeah, it's one of Still Hears' abilities. Being able to emit a light in any dark area, but only people Cassidy chooses are able to see with it. Anyone else she doesn't choose can't see crap. And this stand has a second ability. Right, and with the fugs unable to see, everyone summoned their stands and started to attack. Gabriel had Fredbear use its ability to incite fear into the fugs, which caused some of them to lash out and attack their own men, his ability working even better in the dark. While Cassidy, Dodger, and I focused on the big guy but noticed that as we attacked him, he seemed to be taking extra damage as the other four targeted the other thugs. Apparently, still here's second ability makes all damage taken by anyone or anything in an area also affect a person of their choice. Seeing the big guy as the threat he was due to his size and strength, Cassidy chose him as the target of his damage. And boy did he take that damage. He was covered in bumps and swolls from all the extra punches once we finished with him. Their leader tried to make a break for it, or to at least get some light in the room. But a punch from Fox on the Run into another Fug's legs knocked him down, along with the big guy. Susie got the lights back on. Apparently, Chicken Farm can turn lights on and off in a room for some reason, and all the fugs were taken care of. Yeah, we started to tie them up when I noticed Cassidy seemed to be asking the lead a question. I think I heard her ask about how they found them before the guy smirked and whispered something. Didn't hear what he said, but Cassidy didn't like it as she then had still here knock him out with her lantern. And that would be when we heard police sirens, showing they were finally here. The kids seemed ready to book it. I stopped them for a moment, saying we could help them if they stayed. But Cassidy only gave us a sad smile and said we can't. The lights then turned off. I heard something that sounded like a bunch of punches and then the lights turned on, and they were gone. Do you have any idea how they escaped? Wouldn't say escaped, but I think they ran by punching Rabbit Heart in the face and teleporting to their third saved location. It had to be the last one, since we looked outside right away, and there was no trace of them. I see and there's currently no sign of them. Nothing, zilch, nada. So far, we haven't seen or heard of anything on where they could be. 
but we were able to get samples of the glass and the metal the fugs used. They most likely work for this purple man. And did they reveal anything about their employer? No, unfortunately. I fear this group is bigger than even the kids knew. That is unfortunate. But all this is pretty alarming. You did the right thing telling the Foundation about this threat. I hope we can find this SOB and teach him a painful lesson. We'll get to work trying to find them. Thank you for your cooperation. And let us know if anything comes up. Yeah. Gotcha. So, you think Shard can find them? I hope so. I'll feel better knowing they're okay. Me too. But you're sure about not telling the Foundation if we find them? For now, yeah. Once that SOB is caught, it should be safer for them. Eh, fine. Your call. So why don't you tell me the story about how you met Shard? And I can tell you about some of the users I've ran into. Like this anti-government punk from the UK I met in New York. And that was our FNAF stands. Going in, I wanted the original five animatronics. Minus the fact I used the princess more so than Golden Freddy, but they're the same soul. So partially counts since it's the same, you know, five missing children. And I think this came out really well. I'm still working on doing voices, but I think the more I practice, the better I'll get. But we'll keep these icons I use to help show who's speaking. But what did you guys think of these five stands? Let me know in the comments below, along with other animatronics I should turn into stands, other things to turn into stands, and other videos I should do involving FNAF. And of course, check out my other content, like the other stand videos including where Jacob's story sort of began and when we first met Dodger, or our other FNAF related videos. Dodger's little comment at the end relates to the next stand video I'll be doing. Though, I'm going back to another prompt before I do that. So stay tuned for both. Our next goal is at 800 subs for Pokemon as Mandalorians. So if you liked what you saw, hit like and subscribe to join our still little arcane town that's still growing. And thank you all again for deciding to give my channel and my content a shot. And no matter how you found me, be it through Popcross Studios shout out, from the Nico B animations I made years ago, or by the holy algorithm throwing me a bone and suggesting my content to you, I'm glad to have you here, and I'll see you all next time. Later!